Uh, hello, Johnny. How are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm great. I'm happy to meet you here and happy to uh, hear something about multi-site usage. Yeah. Um, can you tell us uh, the multi-site story? How you did? Uh, how you uh, got involved in it? Um, so I've been using WordPress for 13 years now. Uh, I started on my personal blog and I loved it. Um, and I kind of made a career out of it. Um, I, I worked in an agency for a while, uh, four years, and then I moved to Time. So Time, Time Inc. UK is uh, the UK's largest magazine publisher. Uh, you see, uh, Time is obviously a very, one of the world's biggest publishers. You have Time Magazine, these uh, other big brands. And it was a massive uh, step up for me to go from working at a relatively small agency to working on this massive WordPress site. Um, I just really didn't, I felt very sort of panicked, I didn't know very much and I spent like probably three months of my life like really deep diving into WordPress so I felt like I wanted to like, know, it, know it deeply. Um, the project was a multi-site project so uh, Time Inc. has got like 60 magazine websites that they have there and it made sense that it was a multi-site, that it was um, uh, one theme with lots of customizer options, so you can massively customize it. It's all widget based. So it was six, 60 <laughs> websites yeah. in the one instance of WordPress. One instance of WordPress. Right. Um, but when I started the project, um, it was only meant to be for, for sort of smaller websites. So it was originally meant to be 30 sites. The sort of the ones that they didn't care about as much, sort of the smaller brands, because they were costing a lot of money to maintain such a instances of WordPress. So it made sense to like bundle them all together into one sort of WordPress. Um, but by the time I was leaving, it was such a nice platform, it was so easy to customize and so easy to use. Even the bigger brands like Enemy and Mary Claire and Look and Style moved over to it. So I was quite happy by the time I was leaving, uh, as big as it was. Um, but using WordPress at scale, uh, we had lots of like, training tools like New Relic and I uh, looked at the data and found lots of uh, bugs and things that weren't working properly and things that weren't caching. So I went along to a contributor day, uh, wrote my first patch and kind of ever since then, yeah, that was, that was four years ago and now I'm a maintainer of multi-site. So yeah, it's been a it's kind of a crazy ride from this guy that I felt like I knew nothing to yeah, now being like, an expert in, in my field. And making the things happen yeah. right now. And yeah. what was that patch about? What was that uh, problem that you found solution for? Um, so, uh, in core, you've got the, the the logs table, which is where all the sites are kept, um, and uh, all of the query. The, there was like I think about forty-five places in core it was doing raw SQL queries on that table with no caching on it, which is a massive problem, obviously, because right. uh, there's no caching on it. Uh, so I wrote my, my first sort of big patch was uh, WP site query. So that's a new query class, uh, very similar to WP query, but just query that table that had caching built into it. Uh, and then the, all the patches after that was getting converting all those raw SQL queries to use WP site query. So they all go through one like it actually removed a lot of code instead of doing a lot of raw well, code. Just did it in one place. It's nicely cached. Um, which as a first patch was massive, it was like 2,000 lines of code. Um, most of the first patches are like one, one That's lines. a very, very useful, useful improvement. Um, but yeah, I remember going to WordCamp London uh, and sitting there with my headphones on and I just spent, I didn't speak anyone the entire day, I just sat for eight hours and coded it. Uh, and then I didn't even finish that, then I went home and spent three more hours of coding. It took me 11 hours to build it. And then probably took another probably six weeks to get merged because so I was doing patches and stuff. Yeah, as a, as a kind of a big first thing to put into core, that was kind of, I was very proud of that, it was such a big thing to change. Um, yeah, that was my first thing. That sounds, sounds amazing. And um, uh, do you have uh, uh, some special um, project in your mind that you want to tell us about, a build uh, with WordPress multi site? Um, so, the, the project I worked on at Time probably the most interesting thing I've worked on. Um, that was uh, both multi-site and multi-network. Multi-network. Multi the um, multi-site of multi-sites. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't. It's, it's, it's massively hidden piece of functionality. So if anyone that doesn't know, uh, WordPress also has the ability to not only break uh, into, into into separate sites, but into a network of sites. So you can group the sites together. Um, 
Why and did they choose the, or it was your suggestion to use uh, um, So, So it's my suggestion, so from, from a business standpoint, Time is a really big company, it's got 60, 60 magazines, but they're all broken into departments, right? right. So you've got like women's brands, uh, men's brands, sports, they're all separate um, things. And there was some value in having the ability to have sort of super admins on one network because they would be the managing director of sports brands, but they didn't, we didn't want them to have access to the, to the women's brands or the, the men's brands. So breaking into multiple networks um, was, 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 the, was the best thing. Um, the thing with that as well is we try to keep it one platform, but then kind of segment it off into different sections. So um, there's a plugin called HyperDB, uh, and that's used for partitioning tables. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's originally written by Automatic, but um, when, we, when I came to look at it, um, it was hadn't been maintained in like nearly five years. So Automatic basically had abandoned it. So we started using it, and we found some bugs. We pushed them back to Automatic. Uh, I even bugged the people I knew. So you adopted the plugin? Yeah. Right. Uh, so there's a fork of HyperDB that's called LibreDB, uh, and we use that to sort of partition the, the databases. So I think that's one of the things that a lot of people were frustrated by, uh, multi-site by, is, is, is everything's in one database. But it's very easy to like break it off into multiple databases. So for every network, all the sites were on one database server. So we had four networks, four different departments. We broke them off into different networks. We had one global database that had like, users and stuff that's global for right. everything, but then everything was broken up into separate um, databases, which is kind of a really interesting use case for, for multi-site, the ability to have a shared code base, but then you don't have... So, you know, the worry is that if you have everything in one database, if, it, if that one database falls over, then the entire platform goes down. Right. Whereas um, being uh, separated, you get sort of only one sort of type of site will go down. One right. type. Uh, and I, I will I be told that they've even broken up into into more partitions. So now the bigger sites like Enemy and Mary Claire, that the high traffic sites, they're on their own database servers as well. So there's now like eight, eight, eight So it's more secure for them? Yeah. So the idea is that you don't want to take the whole site. Sounds great. And uh, were there any like, uh, obstacles uh, during developing this project? Some problems that you have to overcome? Predictable or not? Um, yeah, so I think the biggest problem for me was uh, feeling like it was unknown. So this, I, I built that like four years ago when multi network was this massively hidden feature. And I just sort of stumbled upon the multi network plugin. And I was like, I didn't know this is even a thing that I could do. Um, and it really panicked me that I was doing something that felt really unknown on such a high scale. Because if it fails, then it fails. Everything. Everything fails. Um, but it was just a matter of doing the research, um, having test environments, um, running scaling tools against it to make me have confidence to be able to launch it. Yeah, so it's a kind of high responsibility for the developer to develop how to Yeah. Um, the other big one we had with that, that project particularly was maintaining um, different aliases for the, for the sites. Right. So They are top level domains? Yeah. So you have like, obviously you have enemy.com, but we had like at least four different environments we had to um, have the sites on. So we had like a pre-prod environment, set environment, a dev environment, a uh, local uh, vagrant environment and we wanted it so we could just take the database and dump it into different environments and it does work um, which is very hard in, in the WordPress space because there's so many hard code references in the database to uh, you know, if, you, if you're interlinking which a lot of the articles we're doing you want to not pick out the like so um, um, I thought uh, I used a plugin called Makeda which is a domain mapping plugin that um, a human made uh, makes and I also added some stuff on top of that so that basically the, in the database it always stores, so if there's a, a link, it'll always remain example.com and then using filters I would switch it to be the domain that you're currently accessing it on. So if you're accessing... On default? On, on, uh, as you, yeah, on demand it changes it. Great. Using a filter. Um, that was really cool because it means you could just literally just take dump databases and move them around and it made it really cool because I think that's one of the, one of the big issues I have with more sites is, is the main mapping and, and sort of doing that. Great. Yeah. Uh, and um, like 
kind of resume, uh, how do you um, how do you feel about the experience of making for pub the of using multi-site for publishing houses? Uh, uh, how did the client feels uh, about about using the multi-site so, on their site? So uh, they ha they wanted to use WordPress because it was. Um, WordPress is such a great uh, user experience from the admin uh, right. sa standpoint, um, and like they'd gone down the route of doing custom CMSs before, um, but they were never great because you're always just doing doing for just for, for requirements. Whereas with WordPress, you just get lots of shiny things that you would never work on as a business. Like I know it's silly, but like embedding YouTube videos is unbelievably easy in WordPress. You just take the link and put it in. A business wouldn't spend their time to do that because it's just it's just a nice thing that you can get by without. But you get so many nice features with WordPress. Um, publishers love it. Um, I think the the key problem with using multi-site for that for that project was because the sites were basically one template was customizable. Each brand didn't have their own custom front end. Right. And we had, we had to make some sort of sacrifices with that to say that we have to keep this generic enough so that everyone can use it. You can't have your own WizBang header. It doesn't make any sense because if we start giving you a header, then this guy wants a header and this guy wants a Twitter and this guy wants a sidebar and then we're at the point where all the sites are completely different and why are we doing mock sites? Right, right, right. So it was about making things as customizable as possible but, but within constraints. Mm -hmm. um, it, but what was interesting was um, from an editorial standpoint, a lot of the times they would like to blame the technology team that their website wasn't a success. They say our website isn't very good because it doesn't look like another web, our competitor's website. And you go, okay, all right, I don't believe that, but let's let's see. So we migrated um, Cycling Weekly to it, and within the first couple of months, they fought they four times their traffic, which is amazing. Four times their traffic, just by putting it onto WordPress. And then we'd have other brands that would move over and they wouldn't do as well. And they would say, well, your platform is bad. And I'd say, well, no, it's not. These, we've moved these, these brands that have got good content strategies onto the platform and they're doing great. But ultimately, people don't care. As long as the site works in the browser, they don't really care what it looks like. They, they care about the content. About well, the content and about the usability? Yeah. As long as it's responsive, that's a big thing. Responsive. It works on my phone. Uh, and the and experience isn't terrible. It can be horrible colors that people wouldn't care. They would screw them because they they're, they're almost design blind. They just want they want they want the can they want the, yeah. the text. Right? They came here for the content. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so why do you just ask me the question? Um, what do you think the future of multi site is? Yes. Uh, what is the future? Um, Matt was talking today about the future of WordPress in general, and it was about the JavaScript future for WordPress. Yeah. And in, at this point, it's interesting. How do you feel about multi-site? What is the future for multi-site? So I think Matt touched on the idea that uh, going forward will be much more uh, JavaScript uh, experience the admin terminal. And I think uh, going forward, the, the PHP will just be to produce um, a REST API, and then uh, all the user interactions will be in React. So I, I can imagine where you have a future where Literally the entire admin terminal is a React app. Which is kind of an interesting idea that you'd separate the, the visual aspect completely from the, how the data is handled. Mm -hmm. And it could mean, like, like Gutenberg is at the moment, you could take the UI of the admin terminal and then use it in a different project. And the, they could, uh, the, the PHP and the React could live as separate projects almost. Which I think is incredibly interesting. But to get to that point, we need to uh, make the APIs much better. Mm -hmm. the moment, like, uh, the API... Yeah, is... So, the idea gets right, uh, it will make, like, WordPress multi-site, like, platform agnostic. How do you mean? Uh, that um, you can get the information from WordPress multi-site from any other website yeah. using WordPress REST API. Yeah. Right. Um, so, at the moment, we should have APIs to do everything you can do in the admin term. But, but they aren't. They aren't there. So there's some very obvious ones missing, um, like uh, activating themes and plugins. There's no APIs for that. Menus is a weird one that's also missing. Widgets is also missing. 
But from a multi-site standpoint, the biggest ones are uh, networks, sites, um, network options, and then now we've got a new uh, table we've added into core in WordPress 5 of site meta as well. Mm -hmm. uh, none of these have uh, API endpoints, which is, a real sh which is a real shame. So what we're working on as a core team is to try and uh, standardize a lot of this code, the code is very messy at the moment, add standard functions like WP insert network, WP insert site, so the naming's a bit clearer and the, eight, the, the arguments that are sent to it are more standardized to WordPress. And once we have all that, all that pride, all those card functions, card is a great uh, edit delete. Um, once we have all those functions in, we can then leverage all those functions in the, in the REST API. And then generating the REST API endpoint will not be difficult. Like you could basically copy like the, uh, the, the networks endpoint and just uh, get flow from different sources. But the problem is, is the, the functions to to, to the, that API we use are not there at the moment. So. There are tickets, and we're very actively working on, on making the, the whole developer experience from our side much better. So this is the most closest roadmap for WordPress multi-site development, right? So um, we've, we, we've worked on a roadmap for over a year. Um, we published that on the Make It All blog. Um, I think that was at WordCamp US, we, we published that. Um, uh, it's on a Google Doc. Um, but I think you can get it as in the blog post as well. Um, like it's a still evolving thing, and we're trying to work on things. And because everything has to be worked on in order, because we need the functions there to work on the APIs. And that so it ha we had to build a roadmap. And I think I'm very proud of the Microsoft team that we actually have a roadmap because it feels like a, a lot of the other teams don't have a roadmap. And we're telling you, look, this is where we want to be in like uh, two, two and a half years. Um, come on the ride with us, you know. And if you don't agree with the roadmap. Help change it if you think it's something better that we should be doing that time. <laughs> Thank you. I will definitely do this because it's uh, like an honor for me to be part in, in developing something that I already love. Yeah. Um, but there's yeah, there's, there's so many ways you can help out. Like, even if you're you don't want to be making patches, uh, being part of the conversation is really useful. Like just having another head to look at this stuff because. It's quite a small team that works on it. You've got me, Felix, Jeremy, JJJ, John Blackburn sometimes help us, but that's only five people. Um, and we're not always available, you know, because many of us are freelancers and we don't always have time to attend the meetings and stuff like that. But um, yeah, if you can help, uh, anyone can jump in and help uh, just by looking at tickets and, and talking strategy and how we should do stuff and thinking about, you know, there's, there's so many different use cases for multi-site. Um, people are using it uh, a lot now to have apps, so you can have, uh, you know, use it as an app, basically. A, so, so, so startups or something? Yeah, yeah if, you, if you had, uh, you know, if you had an iPhone app that you spin up a multi-site, and you can use that as sort of WordPress as a, this is a, an endpoint, you never actually use WordPress. Um, a lot of people using multi-site for um, multiple languages, and there's so many different use cases, and there's so many hidden ones that are not even in our minds, you know. Um, and and WordPress, multi-site is so customizable. There's so many ways you can customize it. It's it's so valuable to have people that are using it and are doing weird and wonderful things with it um, to give us feedback. Because if we assume that everyone's doing it this way, and but then you're doing it this way, and we we make a change that breaks your stuff, we don't. We don't Thank you, Johnny. It was super useful and it was a pleasure for me to meet you here at Europe. Thank you very much. Thank you.